so so easy. Thank you for joining me today where I'm going to have a look at sewing buttonholes. So if you looked at my previous video about how to sew on a button with a sewing machine, you'll notice that I admitted I'm nervous about buttonholes. The reason is I think that a buttonhole will be completed at the end of a project. Sometimes there will be several buttonholes and I could have spent hours sewing a shirt only for, you, for me to then sew on a buttonhole and it goes horribly wrong and the whole thing is ruined. I think to unpick a buttonhole and redo it would probably mess up the fabric and I'm really concerned about doing it. However, a project has come up that does call for a button and a buttonhole and my choices are bail on the project or pull my finger out and actually learn how to do it. So I've got my equipment ready. I've had a look through my sewing machine manual. Luckily, I kept the book when, it, when I bought the machine, but if you don't have a manual, you can probably find information for your machine online. So I've read through here and had a look at what it recommends. My machine came with one of these. This is an automatic buttonhole foot. It uh, has little marks, but we'll have a look at this in detail when we look at it on the machine a little later. I've got a couple of big chunky buttons for us to start with. My trusty seam ripper. And to give myself a proper test, I've got some just very flimsy cotton fabric. And I'm going to double it up and I'm going to try and make my buttonhole in this cotton fabric. And I thought for the best test, with me to actually try sewing a buttonhole for the very first time, assume it's going to be real because my buttonholes would have to be perfect first time every time and I'm going to video as I do it and we will see how I get on or not. So these are all the buttonhole stitches I have on my machine. As you can see they're all different shapes and I've read up in my manual and it seems like number 30 is kind of your standard buttonhole so I'm going to be using stitch number 30 and trying to make just that straightforward rectangular buttonhole. This is my buttonhole foot. It's called an automatic buttonhole foot because it tells the machine when it needs to stop and start. So looking at it, it has this little bar here. This is the bar where it's going to fit onto the presser foot, so I need to attach that there. It also has some little markings here. If you can see them, I've got green and red, which form like a, a cross hatch. And where you imagine that those intersect, that would be where the start of the buttonhole is. This area here is where the buttonhole is going to be sewn. And then at the top, at the back, I've got this area which adjusts and it's automatically going to make a buttonhole according to the size of my button. So if I open this up, add my button in here and then push down to close so that the button is held in there firmly. And now because it's going to measure this length here and this will be the length that the buttonhole is going to be sewn, hopefully. So let's see how this works out in practice. So my machine is threaded, my buttonhole foot is ready. First thing I need to do is swap out the presser foot. So I'll just take off my regular one and fit on this one. Got to get to that little bar at the front. Okay, everything's in place. So I think I'm ready to go. I've set myself up with some dark thread so we can see how well it goes. And I'm just gonna th thread my fabric in underneath, drop the presser foot down. And um, I've chosen a fabric with stripes because I'm just gonna leave the machine to do its thing and I wanna see how accurately it sews. So if I line up the presser foot just on the outside with that stripe there, kind of more or less, and we will see how it does. So, if I turn on the machine, I'm going to select stitch number 30. And is there anything else to do? No, I think I'm just going to press the foot pedal, keep my hands out of the way, let it do its thing. Oh, no, it doesn't like it. What have I done wrong already? See, I don't even know what that is. Okay, I've worked it out. There's this little bar at the back and I have to pull this down. This is part of the automatic buttonhole feature. It sits behind this little peg here on the foot and that is going to move, I guess, as the foot moves. 
and it will tell it how long to make the buttonhole. Right, thank goodness I have my manual. I'm back on track. I know what I'm doing. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Foot down. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's stopped all on its own. I'm going to take this out and let's have a look. So here's my buttonhole. I have to say I am pretty impressed. I thought the whole the first one was going to be a horrible mess, but actually the machine took care of it and it's pretty good. So I've just got these threads to trim off. Just looking on the back, I can see I've got a little bit of thread stuck just up here. I should have remembered to hold the bobbin thread out of the way, otherwise it's good. So I'm just going to trim those threads off. And now we need to cut a hole in our buttonhole. Now I know you can get things that look a little bit like a hammer and chisel and you lie it along here and bang it. But I don't have anything like that, so I'm just going to use my seam ripper. Um, I've learned through experience that seam rippers obviously go too far sometimes. So I'm just going to stick a pin just here at the end of the buttonhole. Let's see. Come on. Oh, I picked a blunt pin. That's typical. There we go. So I've got my pin now here at the end of the buttonhole and I think hopefully this will stop me seam ripping far too far and going right through the end. Let's get my seam ripper and give it a go. I'm going to stick the seam ripper in right at the end of the buttonhole just there. And let's see how I get on. It obviously it's going to help it if it's nice and sharp. I'm going nice and slow, straight up through the middle, and it stops when I get to that pin. Take my pin out and have a look. And there is my buttonhole. My button slides, oh, or it would if I hadn't dropped it. My button's going to slide in there beautifully. And obviously it just has a few little frayed bits, but I guess I can just pull those out and snip them with some little scissors. And that's my first ever buttonhole. Right first time, hopefully every time. I'm going to sew another and we'll have a look at and just check that it wasn't beginner's luck. I'm going to sew another one and we'll see what happens for the second time. So my second one is done. And look at that. Beautiful. I am now confident that I can sew buttonholes. My machine just takes care of everything as long as I set it up. Remember to drop down that silly little lever at the back and it's going to sew me a perfect buttonhole. For right, first time, every time. That's great. So get yourself some scraps of uh, fabric, get yourself some buttons and give it a go if you've never sewn a buttonhole before. Thanks very much for watching.